from predominantly a wild industry. We've moved now into more of a managed, even with wild camels, into a managed industry, and that's where the, the camel milk industry is now developing, uh, particularly with the change in status of camels around Australia um, in their management. Does that give you a quick overview? Okay, all right. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, and Agri Knowledge did a, I said, as I said before, a large study, um, and we looked at all the le legislative constraints as well. Um, but at the end of the day, cost of procurement. Everyone want every, you know, we, uh, the prime ministers of Australia have had so much lobbying from the UAE in the Middle East about why can't we come and get them, and when they discover how expensive it is to get them out it's a reality check and they'll go home again. And so this is the overwhelming, most difficult issue facing the camel meat industry and, in, and there's a flow on effect, obviously, camel milk industry, is they are incredibly difficult to get and after you start taking them out, you get a vacuum effect because camels aren't silly. And the vacuum effect's quite profound and it puts your costs, sky, starts to skyrocket your costs of mustering. But I can assure you of one thing, we never had a million camels in Australia. That was, a, that was not a lie, it was a mistake. So let's be clear, we can't send the message out that someone lied about it. There's probably about 420,000 camels in Australia at the moment that would be wild, classified as wild. Um, they're going to increase. Um, their population growth rate we think is around 5.5% now on average in those desert lands. Uh, so you don't, it doesn't take much mass to work out how many years ahead we will get a million camels if nothing's done. And at the moment, governments are largely turn, state governments are largely turning their back on the issue, but it will come up again. And then there'll be a panic button push again. And I, I would hope that the camel milk industry and the meat industry are in a position, a lobbying position at that point, to change the way they're procured perhaps next time round. I'm Alan Keeling from Alice Springs. I'm a member of the Australian Camel Industry Association. I'm also a public servant. I joined the association, I think, six years ago when I came back from Western Australia and the big shootout was on. The Centralian Camel Industry Association, which was supporting the, the wild camel industry, uh, it was defunded by the Northern Territory Government. I spent the next couple of years lobbying the Chief Minister's Department to look at an abattoir. Finally, we got the study and, and Mark and Phil G got involved with it. Lauren here formed the Australian Chemical Industry Association because she was in the dairy industry. There was no industry representation. I had a problem in the Territory trying to get anybody to be involved with it. They said, that's an Eastern State thing. All dairies, we're not, we don't want to be involved. So I'm here today to try and seek membership for the association, particularly interested in meat particularly interested in farming. And the problem with farming is, as Mark pointed out, is distance and costs. So anybody want to talk to me about farming and the problems we've got up in the Territory and Western Australia, I'm very happy to talk to them. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to draw us back to the plan and I think that association is really helpful for being, I, I don't know if you guys are members or not, but the the idea that you've got an association means that you can communicate and, uh, and Mark's done his best to consult as widely as he could within the networks that he knew uh, and my sense is that the plan is a reasonable starting point. We've got a list here of other uh, things that we could be looking at and uh, we've but really as a starting point we've got these three priorities which were uh, the uh, productivity awareness workshops and nutrition and breeding now nutrition perhaps fits in with the productivity uh, and it's also perhaps a welfare issue as you bring wild camels into the uh, feedlot milking situation and so that, that sort of addresses a particular industry-wide risk that uh, I think people need to get right is the welfare of the camels as they come in to this quite different system and if the industry gets on a path of uh, genetic improvement, then uh, that's a long-term path 
and it's not a bad place to start as well. So my sense is that while there are lots of priorities and things that we could be looking at all at the same time, and maybe we can be looking at some of these things at the same time, uh, this is not a bad place to start uh, and we had to start somewhere. So. Uh, as a frame for our investments, uh, we would be still looking to execute on this sort of plan, uh, but definitely we'll take feedback from uh, this forum to, as to the direction that we need to take the industry. But uh, I, I'm just wanting to test with the, the group here that uh, this framework, nutrition and breeding, and dealing with you know recognizing the human capital that's required to grow the industry uh, is a useful frame for uh, us to think about the industry going forward as if we've got to pick something and we've got to pick a starting point somewhere are we happy with that right Nutrition, breeding, and health. Yeah, because so much talk about health, especially that we are dealing with uh, feral animals moving in the mm. Australian outback. So there is uh, a biosecurity issue. There are other issues, and it's important, especially that we uh, usually promote our products as a clean and healthy and all these things. So health is an important issue. In reality, we have put health with that. And it's it, it does dominate this forum health, so it is in it is in yeah yeah. It's just been in, uh, it's 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 just the way Duncan's worded it a little bit different the way I've worded it, but health's definitely in there. Health and disease management, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that no it, we've we've cut. I think we'll cover that well. I I still uh, Duncan would like to see these issues uh, discussed towards the end, uh, and where this group wants to go? Is it an industry body? Is it going moving into an existing industry body? Um, uh, because that, that's probably the way uh, the broader issues are going to get carried forward. Yeah, one more question, I think. Probably just one to add to that uh, would be cross-industry um, association, like with the actual bovine dairy industry, because so much of their dairy, you know, Dairy Australia, and I suppose where you know where we and MLA, I suppose, where we're going to align ourselves because so much of their research is, you know, the milking and actual stuff they've already done. All right, uh, th thank you for that, everybody. Um, like I keep saying, there is uh, plenty of time in these two days for networking and informal discussion which will help feed into formal discussions towards the end. Um, this is about you taking charge. We're just setting the scene, laying down some foundations. You, at some point, this group needs to take charge of where it wants to go and how it wants to do that. I, I keep mentioning there is an existing industry body that does incorporate camel milk. Whether that best fits the model for the, the greater group or not, that whether this group needs another industry body, that's a question I think needs to be raised before we finish this forum at, at the end of tomorrow. All right, with that, uh, I'd like to uh, um, suggest we break for morning tea, which is about half an hour, is that correct, Michael? Uh, there is, um, I noticed the camel milk bottle's the really small one, that's good. They're getting the message here. It's taken them a while. We've been beating them around the head at this place about camel meat, camel milk. They, they, it's really interesting. Uh, in fact, there's a whole marketing issue just there. Um, but if you could join us at the back there for morning tea and uh, coffee and tea. If anyone, uh, and there's plenty of water to go around. I, I'm not sure, is there juice there as well, Michael? No. I, okay, all right. All right, so we'll return to our first speaker back in about half an hour. Thank you.